Good morning and welcome to our joint Faith and Salem service this Sunday. Uh, we are so excited for you to be here. I am Pastor Micah and just a few announcements for our gathered community this day. A reminder that on Wednesday, July 1st, the Reverend Lenny Duncan, author of Dear Church, a love letter from a black preacher to the whitest denomination in the U.S. will be joining us for a special event on Zoom where he will share some of his readings and insights into the book and also have a Q&A. Tickets can be purchased on Faith's website and at Lenny's request all proceeds will go to assist black mothers in the local Baltimore area to pay internet bills during this time of COVID-19 and after. 
All are welcome to join us for this event, uh, especially the Faith in Salem community, since we've been working on so many of these things together. We highly encourage all of you to join us uh, July 1st at 7 o'clock p.m. for that uh, wonderful event. A reminder for our faith community, you can continue to join us on Wednesday evenings for our Faith Fellowship Hour at 6.30 p.m. on Zoom when we check in and pray with one another. Uh, if you would like those links, please email me and I will happily uh, send them to you so that you can check in with us on Wednesdays. Men of Faith is returning to meeting once a month. So the next breakfast will be on July 11th. John Schober will send out information to any who wish to join. Uh, if you would like to be a part of that, please contact me or John Schober so that we can get that information to you. Again, we are so grateful that you are worshiping with us this day. Good morning. I am Pastor Sarah from Salem Lutheran Church in Catonsville. A few reminders for our Salem community. Our Zoom Wednesday fellowship continues this Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. You should have received a Zoom link in this week's email. Additionally, in this week's email, you will see information uh, that tells you that RSVPing for outdoor worship for the weekend of June 27th and 28th is now open. A reminder that online worship services will continue as usual even when we move to these outdoor socially distanced worships. Uh, but if you are interested in joining us for an outdoor service, please see your email, read the document entitled Guidelines for Outdoor Worship at Salem, decide if that's something that you want to try, and sign up through the link provided in your email. We want to wish this morning uh, a happy Father's Day to all who are celebrating. We also pray this day for all for whom Father's Day is difficult. We thank you for uh, the fatherly and loving uh, figures in our lives. Thank you and good morning. And now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with our order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us. So that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our opening hymn, I have decided to follow Jesus.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we do your will, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. To today's lesson is from Paul's letter to the Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let us read from Psalm 69 responsibly. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also, and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you. At the time you have said, O Lord, in your great mercy, O God, Answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me, because of my enemies deliver me. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, 
Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. and welcome to our children's message. Well, to begin, we need a volunteer. Do we have a volunteer, Miss Robin? Oh, here we go. Christy, welcome. Thank you for volunteering. Hello. It's good to have you with us. Well, let me begin with a question for you, Christy. Okay. How many hairs do you have on your head? Oh my goodness, I don't know. You don't know? Well, her dad is here. Uh, Guy, how many hairs are on your daughter's head? Well, I know she has more hair than I do, but yeah. I don't know how many. But how many? You don't know? No, you don't know, no. Well, Miss, Miss Robin and I are going to have to remedy that, okay? Well, let's start taking a few measurements here. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh-huh. Okay. All right, Robin, I think we can do this now. Okay, are you ready? ready? All right, you got the calculator there? Okay, let's see. Well, there's one. All right. Oh, there's another one there. Make that two. There, there's number three. Mm -hmm. Well, this is all a bit silly, isn't it, Christy? Yeah, it's pretty silly. But it's inspired by what Pastor Micah read for us from the Gospel of Matthew. He told us that Jesus once said, well, so all the hairs on your head are numbered. Now here's a question for you. Who do you think did the numbering? Who knows all these hairs on your head? Was it God? Yeah, yeah, it's God. Yes, that's what Jesus is telling us. In a roundabout way, what Jesus is saying is that God knows us so well and God loves us so much that even the hairs on our head are numbered and God knows what that number is. God knows them all. And that is a wonderful thing to know, yes? Let's pray. Good and gracious God, thank you for this wonderful day. And thank you for knowing all the hairs on our head. Thank you for loving us and holding us so precious and valuable to you. Be with us this day. Keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So when you comb your hair tonight or wash your hair tonight or in the morning, make that a good time to remember how much God loves you. Thank you. 
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Peace. It is a goal that I hear shared over and over again, whether shared on social media, shared in prayers each week, or shared in our churches. Peace is a common refrain and calling, striving for peace and love and harmony in this world. And it is for that reason that many of our churches look the way they do. And there is pride in many of these churches for the way we appear and we are categorized. They are communities that gather with people of differing political opinions, differing economic backgrounds, differing ideologies. Faith and Salem are no exception to this. We have members across the spectrum of these beliefs and backgrounds, and much of that is attributed to peace. The idea that even though we have these differences, we still get along. We still can sit in the same pews, go to the same potlucks, sing hymns together in the choir, read the Bible together. But there is a slight catch. We can do these things. We can achieve and sustain this peace when we promise not to talk about the things that make us different. The church functions a lot like a family dinner at Thanksgiving. As long as we don't talk about religion or politics, we'll be just fine. But the minute that those topics enter our conversations, our peace is disturbed. Equilibrium is off balance, and many of us just pray that Pandora's box is not open. There is a disruption in our peace right now. Because that which we've been covering up is being uncovered. And that it is showing us the flaw in our understanding of peace. That conflict avoidance is not actually peaceful resolution. Jesus said, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. There is a disruption in our peace right now, and it is because that which we've been reluctant to talk about, that which we've tried to forget, cover up, and move past, is being shouted from the rooftops all around us. Black lives matter. Human rights and dignity for immigrants and refugees, equal lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender rights, adequate health care for the most vulnerable, resources and support for teachers and students in public education, the end of white supremacy. We've been told that talking about these things is not the role of the church. That these are outside of our mission, outside of our concern, and so we should not talk about them. Maybe we should ignore them, move past them, or forget them. Even recently I have heard from some, for the sake of peace, please let us move on from these things. But Jesus says in our Gospel text today, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and one's foe will be members of one's own household. This is our gospel today. This is our quote from Jesus today. As disciples of Christ, we are called not to shy away from the tension of difficult conversations for the sake of peace. We are called to boldly enter into these conversations knowing that they matter to our faith. As Austin Channing Brown writes, 
I believe firmly that to practice love is to disrupt the status quo which is masquerading as peace. The goal is not peace. The goal is truth. The passionate truth of God's love for all of us. When we read this gospel passage in Matthew, and so much of Scripture, that passion of God's truth should call out to us. There is passion and fire in these words of truth. We have a God that is passionate about our lives. We have a God who passionately loves us. We have a God who is so passionate about our existence, about our treatment of one another, about our rules and ordinances governing one another, that God would come into this world as one of us, demanding justice, demanding equal rights and treatment, demanding reform and adjustment of unfair laws, exposing those laws and hypocrisies by sacrificing his own life against the systems that just wanted him to be quiet. There is fire and passion in these words of truth. Words that do not shy away from the topics that we so quickly want to cover up or move past. As the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, true peace is not merely the absence of tension, it is the presence of justice. Dear Church, Peace, for the sake of quiet, is not the work of the gospel, but truth. Truth of God's passionate love for us, exactly as we were created. That is the gospel message. That is the work that we are called to as disciples. We are inspired by this gospel message. From Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 through 40. A lawyer asked Jesus a question to test him, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. From Matthew chapter 23, verse 23, Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you tithe mint, dill, and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. It is these you ought to have practiced without neglecting the others. The work of the gospel is clear. Scripture calls us to it over and over again, justice and mercy and faith. The prophet Micah writes, And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? The prophet Amos writes, Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Dear church, the voices of God's children are crying out from the rooftops around us. The voices of our black and brown siblings. The voices of our LGBTQIA siblings. The voices of those without health care. The voices of those forcibly removed from their children and families. The voices of the oppressed. This is the work of the church. These are our neighbors. We can no longer demand their silence for the sake of our comfort and peace. This is our work. And as disciples, we too are called to shout this from the rooftops. Do not think that I have come to bring peace. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. When we speak with the sword of truth, not everyone will come along with us. This is the cost of discipleship. Jesus said, For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother. 
when we speak with the sword of truth, there is usually division. 500 years ago, Martin Luther spoke truth, proclaiming the good news for all people, and the church was divided. Fifty years ago, the Lutheran church fought for the right for women to be ordained, and the church was divided. Ten years ago, the Lutheran church fought for the right for the LGBTQ pastors to be ordained, and the church was divided. When we live into the gospel, when we speak with the sword of truth, and speak to the passionate love for all of God's people, the church, historically, is often divided from those who would rather maintain the status quo for the sake of silence. But Jesus tells us today, we must keep going. We cannot be silent we cannot settle for false peace for the sake of false unity. Peace comes later. As Nelson Mandela said, peace is not just the absence of conflict. Peace is the creation of an environment where all can flourish regardless of race, color, creed, religion, gender, class, caste, or any other social markers or difference. Until all can flourish, until streams roll down like justice, until black lives matter, we must shout God's truth with passion and fire from the rooftops. Love your neighbor as yourself. When we talk about justi justice, mercy, mercy, and faith, Division, conflict, and tension, it comes out of the passion of God's truth. It comes from Jesus' call to discipleship. The truth that all, every single person, is so passionately loved by God. Every single person is created in the image of God. You are created in the image of God, and you are loved exactly for who you are. And every single person has the divine right to feel, know, and experience that love just as you do. That is what the gospel is all about. That is the fulfillment of our gospel message. That all the world, that all people might know they are loved for exactly who they are. So passionately loved that Jesus would give his very life that we might know and show radical, sacrificial love. And that is the kingdom of God. That is why we are preaching this way. That is why we are starting these conversations. So that one day, we can look around us and see the fulfillment of God's truth and love, where we reflect the, di the diversity of the kingdom of God, where we are better able to care for our neighbors because we name and address the things that are harming them, where we are safe and loved for who we are in our own skin and in our own identity where we love others for exactly who they are, where true peace is made manifest because we aren't covering up or hiding the church's past sins or mistakes, but instead engaging in the work of repentance, forgiveness, and reconciliation through Christ who has and will make all things new. We are called to follow Jesus in building this community. May it be so. Amen. Amen.
Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Whom you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you. Yeah, I will follow you. Yeah. All your ways are good. All your ways are sure. I will trust. Expansive God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another, that our differences and diversity might be celebrated as the fulfillment of your creation. Let us see your divine image and hear your voice in every person, especially those black, brown, and indigenous persons of color who have been marginalized and oppressed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Providing God, your creation shows us that life comes from death. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been ill for too long. Direct the work of all who care for birds and their habitats. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protecting God, sustain and keep safe all who work for the peace and care of others across the world. Revive and strengthen organizations dedicated to caring for refugees and migrants while their homelands struggle for peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you promise to be with all who are persecuted for your sake. 
Guide all who speak your word of justice and console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are. Be with the leaders of justice movements for racial and justice and equality, for LGBTQ communities and Pride Month and all who are prophets for the care of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, you are with us and we're never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture as you do. Comfort all those who long to be fathers and all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray God's healing mercies for Steve Straw, Don Brentler, Marcy Schuett. We rejoice with Laurie Scott and John Servak, who were married yesterday, and pray a long, long life of happiness for them. And two, we rejoice with Emily and Zarni Pukuma on the birth of their son, Zara Lang. We pray also for Bob and Margaret, Gabby, Linda, Tom, Lou, John and Kathy, Martha, June, Marilyn, Rebecca, Pat and Diane. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And, and also with you. We've now come to our time of offering. A reminder that you can uh, give your offering on either the Salem website to the Salem congregation or to uh, Faith through their website. You can also write a check and put that in the mail to either congregation. We want to say thank you to both the Salem and Faith communities for your consistent generosity through this time. Oh. 
Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our closing hymn, Blessed Be the Name of the Lord.